Welcome to the Rocky Mountain ATV MC YouTube channel. My name's Josh Knight from Ride With The Knights and today I'm gonna to be sharing some of my favorite tips about the attack position. We previously made a video discussing some of the common mistakes we see off-road riders make with the attack position, and today we want to dive a little bit deeper discussing the benefits and some key components to properly execute the attack position. The first component to the attack position is proper hip placement. Proper riding technique teaches to place your hips towards the rear of the bike. This is often referred to as unlocking your hips. What this does is it disengages your lower half from your upper half. There's all sorts of bumps and different impacts that we incur on off-road riding, and we want to make sure that we can dissipate as much of that energy as possible with our bodies. By properly executing hip placement, you're going to find benefits on the motocross track and off-road riding. Specifically on the motocross track, you're going to have braking bumps, whoops, jump landings, all of these different areas where by properly placing your hips, you're going to be able to absorb that terrain a lot better, specifically braking bumps. For off-road terrain, you're going to have your ditches, G-outs, rocks, whoops, logs, roots, everything in off-road terrain that has impacts. By properly unlocking your hips, you're going to be able to absorb energy and maintain balance. One of the key components to the attack position and one of the biggest benefits is just allowing your body to stay in a balanced position where you maintain traction. Without properly executing this, you'll find yourself uh, losing balance much easier. The second component of the attack position is proper foot positioning. Proper riding technique teaches to place the ball and toe area of your foot on the foot peg. A lot of motocross and off-road riders struggle with a bad habit of riding on their arches. Our bodies are built to spring and jump and move all from the toe and ball area of our foot. When we ride on our arches or our heels, we're really limiting the amount of range and motion in our ankles and our legs. At first, once you start implementing this into your riding, it's going to feel a little bit foreign. However, with some practice, you'll begin to feel a little bit more natural and you'll recognize a whole host of different benefits, such as increased balance, you'll have more range of motion in your ankles, and one of the biggest benefits for me is you'll start to have more intentional braking rather than just dragging your brakes all the time. So there's a whole host of benefits, mostly just increased range of motion and starting to use our body's natural suspension. This applies for both motocross riding and off-road riding. The third component of the attack position is the ankle position. And as we go through these different steps, it kind of starts to layer and build upon itself. So proper ankle positioning is fairly simple. I just like to grip the motorcycle with both my ankles and my knees. A lot of the times our next step is gonna be talking about knees. A lot of the times we discuss knees, but as I've observed my own riding, I noticed that it's kind of a hybrid grip between my ankle and knee area. Now, if you're struggling to find a lot of grip from your leg and lower half, Try practicing pointing your toes straight or slightly in. Oftentimes we feel like we're doing so, however, if we look down, we're noticing that our toes are slightly outward. If you wanna try practice and try and squeeze your knees with your toes outward, it's pretty much impossible. So practice by riding with your toes forward or slightly turned in. This is gonna drastically increase your ankle and knee grip. One of the benefits to squeezing the motorcycle with your ankles is you will drastically improve your control of the bike from beneath. A lot of the times we try and move the motorcycle around with our arms and we get tired a lot quicker. By focusing on using our legs, our ankles, and our knees to move the motorcycle, we'll be able to place our bike where we need to when riding. This is going to translate to off-road riding and motocross riding. The fourth component of the attack position is proper knee placement, and this just goes hand in hand with ankles. That's why I kind of want to put them close together because both of them are 50-50. I like to squeeze the bike about 50% with my ankles and 50% with my knees. However, it's going to depend on each rider. I would recommend practicing using both your ankle and your knee. I like to squeeze up near the shroud area. And again, if you find it difficult to squeeze the bike, try focusing on what direction you're placing your toes. But overall, ankle placement and knee placement is going to allow us to control the motorcycle from beneath. We really want to use our upper body just as a pointer, just to direct the bike and use the control features. We want to stabilize ourselves and move the entire motorcycle by using our legs and our lower half, specifically from the contact points near our ankle and our knee. 
As we build these different layers of the attack position, you'll notice offensive benefits as well as defensive benefits. And one of the greatest benefits of controlling the bike with your legs, your ankles, and your knees is you'll have a very strong defensive position for when things go wrong. Oftentimes you'll recognize when you're riding whoops or whatever type of obstacle, if you get off balance and get kicked to one side or the other, by controlling the motorcycle with your knees, gripping really tightly, you'll be able to recover much more frequently by using the proper placement of your ankle and knees. The fifth component to the attack position is proper arm placement. And we've heard all the way from the first days of our riding to get our elbows up and ride with our elbows up, but we don't always talk about the reasons why we need to do so. By bringing our elbows up, we're increasing the range of motion of our upper body and again, just allowing our body to use its full potential and move in its full range of motion. For motocross riding, you're gonna find entering corners, uh, specifically during choppy braking bump sections, you're gonna allow that front end of the motorcycle to move closer to your chest and keep your head stable, neutral, and not moving and absorb that impact in a better way. Another key benefit for motocross riding is keeping your arms up during cornering is gonna maintain your balance during a rut. Oftentimes, if we allow our elbows to fall, we start to lose traction. Two of the most common things that can happen in corners on a motocross track is your front tire starts to catch the inside or it starts to climb out of the rut. And by keeping your elbows and arms in a strong position, you're gonna minimize how much these errors occur, maintain a, a smoother arc through the cornering process. For off-road terrain, you're gonna find rocks, um, ditches, specifically rocks and choppy terrain. By keeping your elbows up, you're going to allow that front end to move in the direction that it needs to. By dropping our elbows, we really decrease the, the range of our upper body and we're just limiting how much our bodies can move. This all translates to endurance and fatigue by not using our muscles and our body in the way it's intended to be used. So benefits again for both motocross and off-road riding. The final component of the attack position is proper head placement. We wanna keep our head upright and looking as far ahead as possible. We're gonna notice a ton of different benefits on the motocross track and off-road terrain. Specifically when riding the motocross track, you're gonna notice a lot of benefits when cornering. By allowing your gaze to continue farther out into the turn, you'll naturally carry more momentum and more speed and be more prepared for obstacles ahead. Now this is really big for off-road riding because we're often riding at speeds that are a little bit faster and covering terrain that is unfamiliar or new to us. So by keeping your head up and looking as far ahead as possible, you're going to notice and recognize terrain as early as possible and allow yourself time to properly analyze the terrain and get into the proper positioning. For a more in-depth breakdown on how to retrain, be sure to check out our How to Retrain and Go Faster video. All in all, the attack position is the most offensive and defensive position that we can be in when riding the motorcycle. It's literally the number one thing that I teach all riders, whether they're motocross riders or off-road riders. Because by doing so, you're going to increase every component and aspect of your entire riding. It literally doesn't even matter if you're riding street bikes in the desert or if you're riding a French enduro bike on a motocross track, you're gonna notice all sorts of benefits to your own riding. If you liked this video, subscribe to the Rocky Mountain ATV MC YouTube channel. And if you're looking for more content just like this, visit ridewiththenights.com. Check out our free one hour training. It's jam packed, dense, full of so many different tips. You're totally gonna wanna check this out. It's awesome. It's helped hundreds of off-road riders just like you improve their off-road riding and begin riding faster, safer, and more efficient. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.